Okay, this is uh, lecture number two. It's uh, Wednesday. It's the uh, 24th of March. We're going to follow up on this lecture for MIS 3371. And let me turn the sound off here. I'm going to start this lecture off. Uh, this is number two on the syllabus. We're doing the replacements for the coronavirus lectures in person. So, looking on the syllabus here, everybody knows where the syllabus is. Down here on the bottom of the syllabus, we pull in four. So this was Monday night's lecture. Uh, this is going to be tonight's. We'll put tonight's right here. We finished this segment of stuff, all of these pieces to talk about XML. We got all the way through that information on the first doc, on the first lecture. So what we're going to do now is we're going to look at the, the final exam. One of the two questions is going to be about coding XML. So what we're going to do in this particular lecture is we're going to we're going to worry specifically about how to answer the XML question on the second exam. So come down here and on here are all the second exams. Last night we looked at some of these. All right, so tonight we're going to look at numerous of these and see if we can find the patterns in them and what seems to be important about about XML. Okay, so let's come back up here and let's, let's start off with the, the sort of general case about the coding structures we're going to have to, to look at. All right, so we're going to start with this, this document. Let's bring this down a little bit. Okay, about like that. All right, that's good enough. Okay, so this is, this is an XML tree. Now, this, this is sort, sort of part of... You know what we're what we're looking at here. Let's go get another browser up. And we'll go look at this. But this is this is XML, and what this is this is a picture of an XML tree. And we haven't, we haven't really talked about XML being a tree, but it's a tree. And how we're going to express all the pieces of the tree we we began to look at last time, and what we want to just sort of remember that. There's a root node. This is the, the outside set of tags. So let's go out here and go to uh, let's do this. Let's go to the home page. Stop that. Let's go to the home page. Home page over here. Get this out of the way. Let's look at our XML discussion. The DTD. Okay, here's here's the, the DTD issues that we've got. And here's the tree that they create. Okay, so when we look at any any of these particular examples, let's let's go get to the one where we say rolling out. Here we go, Marx Brothers version. Let's go look at the Marx Brothers version here. Let's get this one up a little bit bigger. Okay, so here's the Marx Brothers DTD. Right? It's called Marx Brothers Movies. And here is the main element. In other words, this is the outside set of tags. And this one's really, really simple. What we got here really is this, this just, you know, one one thing to worry about movies right and then here's the movie and a movie's got a title and a year and multiple roles and the title is just some data the year is some data but each role has an actor and some characters like that okay so let's this is the Marx Brothers movie. So this is the root. This is the outside set of tags. That one, oops, crap. <laughs> we gotta go get it again. All right, let's go get it in the syllabus. Oh, 
Okay, it didn't kill the wrong one here. All right, here's here's the picture. Here's here's the DTD. All right, so Marx Brothers movies. That's the outside tag. All right, that's that's the root. That's where we're gonna start drawing this graph. And these are gonna be all the children. In other words, all the tags that are under the root. And so what we notice is they're all the same tag. They're called movie tags, and there's a bunch of them apparently. So these are all movie tags like this, right? First one is child zero, then there's child one, two, three, four, five, six, all the way down to this number, which is the number of movies, root. These are all child nodes. How many child nodes are there? And we number them, zero, one, blah, 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 blah. And this last one would be root.childnodes.length minus one, zero to that number minus one. So every one of these things on this branch is a movie. Okay, let's take the one sort of in the middle and arbitrarily say movie number I. Movie number I. Okay, so here's the, let's see how that breaks down. So a movie breaks down into three, well, actually a lot more. The first tag is a title, a year, and then some roles. Okay, so here's the title tag, year tag, and now we start having roles. Now, you'll notice here, when we go over here and we look at the DTD, we don't know how many roles that there are. There could be, you know, one or 5,000 roles. We just don't really know, but a bunch of roles. All right, so I. So this is going to be root dot child node sub I. Then this node is going to have, each movie is going to have a title as its first child in a year as its second child, and a road role as its third child. And then, more and more and more and more roles. Let's roll, 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 boom, 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 for however many roles that there are. Then at the next level, the role is not data. It has children. It has an actor's name and the character that that actor played. So we have Root, where we start. These are all the Marx Brothers movies. A branch, a node for each movie. This is how many movies there are. Each movie has a title, a year, and one actor or role, actor, role, character. Okay, so these are all at the same level. Title, year, first role, second role, third role. So notice all these children are numbered. Here's child zero, child one, child two, child three, child four, however many there are. Okay, and so the, the number of that is root dot child nodes of i dot length. In other words, how many children does this one have? So let's suppose that number is 10. Suppose this movie has 10 children. Well, I know two of the children are going to be, one's going to be title and one's going to be year, so there must be eight branches, eight children, that describe a role, and there will be an actor and a character for each one of those roles. So you can sort of figure out, because you know if some of them are fixed, these two are fixed, there's only one of them, but there's a bunch, potentially, of these. We see that right there, a bunch of roles. So title is just data, year is just data. Boom, right, so we got, it doesn't have any children, year doesn't have any children, but Role has children. Okay, so here's role. So role has two children, the actor and the character, actor and the character. So we come back up here. So for each role, however many there are, we have one actor and one character. So role always has two children, and there's a bunch of roles. And there's the number of roles is this number, root dot child node sub i dot length how many children this branch has. And so we take away these two, that's how many roles there would be. Root dot child nodes, sub i dot child nodes dot length, number of children. Okay, so we're gonna get this every time. So every time on the exam, you're gonna see this. I'm gonna, the DTD is gonna be there 
And the, the interesting characteristic about the DTD is these plus signs. The plus signs are the magic. The plus signs tell you how to write the code. Now, that, that's, that's almost exclusively true. Because what's going to happen is every time you, you take a look at this DTD, if there is a plus sign, then in your code, you're going to have to have a loop. Okay, so clearly, if we're going to look at all the data for all the Marx Brothers movies, there's going to be a bunch of movies, so there's going to have an outside loop through all the movies. And in each movie, we're going to have a title and a year and a role. Like so here's Marx Brothers movie. Here's the opening movie tag right here. Here's the title. Make this a little bigger. So here's the outside text. Here's the movie tag. Here's the title. Title is Co Coconuts, 1929. First role, the actor is Zeppo Barks, playing the character of Jameson. Next role is the actor Groucho Marx playing the character Hammer. Harpo Marx playing Harpo, Chico playing Chico, and Margaret Dumont playing Mrs. Potter. Potter. Boom. Zeppo, Groucho, Harpo, Chico, and Margaret Dumont. All right. And then we get to another movie. So this movie starts here. Ends. here to here is the first movie and then there's another movie and another movie and another movie we are promised that there's going to be a whole bunch of movies we actually we look at the problem okay so let's, but so we, we looked at this code you know how, how this we're going to do this rollout right here let's get this on the screen again pay a little attention to this run through this again all right so this is cleaning up the tabs and the carriage returns and the land feeds that it might be in the file that i inadvertently put into the file here's the text the text area that contains the xml on the exam you'll be able to, you'll be able to see that that'll be real obvious to you uh, you don't write this this is not part of the exam uh, Basically, I'm going to start you off. I'm going to tell you how to do this. What What's the parser we're going to use? And we're going to tell you what. I'm going to define a root. And you start writing code about right here. In other words, I want to roll this out to a table. So output string, I'm just going to say it's Marx Brothers movie. And here's my outside loop. Now, notice my outside loop is root.childnotes.length. Root.childnotes.length. I'm going to roll out a row for each one of these rows and there's my there's my row right there and it's HTML so I gotta start with a row tag right end with a row tag and what I'm gonna write out first is I'm gonna write out root.childnodes 0 and root.childnodes 1 right, so that's year and title so that's your title. Oops, what year was this? Oh, this wasn't in the year. It's right here. Okay. Okay, so there's my row and here is the title and here is the year and here's my other loop this is going to be my my rolls loop and it's going to make a row and i'm going to write out the actor and the character it's like just like i've been done before right? all right 
right, so let's let's go look at some examples. Let's let's just pick. Let's just arbitrarily pick one, and you know we should we should be able to see. Okay, this is the bowling tour exam. All right, let's load this up a little bit. See how this goes. Walking through this, we're just gonna walk through this and just look at it. So you can tell this is XML, right? You, know, you can see the tags like that. And so here's the question. Uh, the question is going to be: Here's the DTD. Sort of expected to see that, right? It's the Junior Bowler Tour, and it's composed of a bunch of people who go bowling. And for each one of them, we have their rank and their name and some information about them. There are 50 of them. Uh, rank has a number between 50 and 1. Name is their full name, and info is a big bunch of their career history. Okay, so that's the DTD. So here th here's the trick on the exam. I'm going to make the jump for you. I'm gonna, we're going to have the DTD, and then I'm going to tell you what each item and how to get each item in this. So this is root dot child node sub i. We know what, what that is ostensibly, right? First child, second child, third child. First child is bowlers. Bowlers is the only loop, right? How many bowlers? So for each bowler inside this loop, Node 1, Node 2, and Node 3, rank, name, and info give me all the data. Okay, so program says, I mean, the question says, make, you know, assume we start with the definition of root, leave all that stuff out at the beginning. What I want you to do is also uh, tell me how many times the string JBT appears inside all the information tags. What? Hmm. Let's look at the output here. Right, there's there's the ranks. As the ranks go from 50 up, rank, name, information about the person. JBT happened 24 times. So you'll notice what JBT is the junior bowling tournament organizers, junior bowling tour. So probably in all their accomplishments, you'll notice five career JBT titles and you got bowler of the year, et cetera, et cetera, and that string. So this is very, very similar to what we did on the first couple of exams. First couple of exams we had we had two questions in general, we had a big string and we had to manipulate that string and roll it out into a table. So here we are again. So we don't have a data in a big string. We got a very peculiar kind of string. We got an XML file. We're going to do the same thing though. We're going to roll this thing out. So you can see how big this is. It's 50 bowlers. Like that. There's the question. Here's the answer. Okay, now let's go, let's go look at the code. Okay, so we'll look this up. So a bigger. So here's our code. Now we said before what we're likely going to see is we're going to have all this stuff up here at the top. This cleaning up and and setting everything up in the root. It's going to be just like all the rest of the examples. I clean up the data, carriage turns, tabs, and line feeds. Get rid of all that. I go get the data out of this text area right here. This line right here. So going to get this text area clean it up, create the parser, load the data into the parser, and hand you root. Exam starts right here. Okay, so again, you should be extremely familiar with how this is going to go. We're going we're gonna to roll out a table and we're going to count something. Okay, so here's my two initializing pieces. I've got a, looks like I've got a counter. I've got to count the number of times the string J BT appears in everybody's career description. Here's my starting table tag, and here is the opening loop. Here's the closing loop. How many times this counter appears? Here's my counter ray we're going to get through. 
part. It's really similar to exam number one. I'm going to roll out a table. I'm going to do something along the way make a nice report. Okay, so initialization, primary processing loop here, terminating loop, roll it out into a dip block. Okay, hit the button. This is what you get. Get a rank, person's name, career description. Nothing to it. Well, I mean, there's some things to it. Okay, uh, so this only took 14 lines of code, right? and that's that's not an unusual amount of code for one of these questions. Uh, you had everything you needed to know. This is, you know, spring 18 exam. So let's go back over here, get to the syllabus. This is the spring 18 exam, so... You had the DTD. This, this, this is what you got to look at for a while. You got to stare at this for a minute and get, get your head around. What does this thing say? Hey, this is a one loop program. I got one plus sign in here. And I got to write this table. I got to put rank here. I got to put their name here. I got to put their career history over here. Here's my loop. Here's my plus sign. Here's the values that go in three columns. Yeah, I'm surprised it takes 14 lines. Okay. All right. So. This is spring 18. Not, not a bad exam. It's okay. Spring 18 is good enough. Let's go look at some others. So let's back this thing up. Let's go down and look at... Mm, this one looks a little tougher, but that's okay. They're all about the same. This is summer 2019. Here's my text area. It's got a big XML file in it. Uh, this is the top 100 dividend paying stocks. It's too much stock data. Okay, so here's the DTD. Top dividend stocks. Outside set of text is top dividend stocks. And it's, this looks strangely familiar. It's only got one piece. It's got a bunch of stocks in them. I bet you and root.childnodes.link is a hundred okay stocks there's my loop all right each stock has got a rank stock name ticker symbol sector and yield with one two three five columns of data that looks reasonably straightforward one two three four five there's rank rank is data Stock name is data, ticker symbol is data, sector is data, yield is data. Wow, wow, easy piece of cake, one loop. Like one loop in the DTD. All right, so what I got here is I've got what, what? 11 possible industry sectors. What's an industry sector? Oh, this is this. Oh, I see. Each one of these stocks is in one of these sectors. Here are the sectors, healthcare, real estate, energy, da 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 da, da. Here's the 11 sectors, the, the 11 values that sector can have. Don't write this array. Okay, so we're going to assume that this is in your program. I want to create three 11 element arrays. Max yield, the largest yield for each sector. Max name, hold a stock name with a stock with the highest yield. And then number, num stock to hold the number of the stock in each sector. Initialize all this with zeros. Assume the XML has been loaded. Here's my outside loop. Here are the values that I want. Rank, stock number, ticker symbol, section, and yields. Then I want a 12 row, a four column table. Put this in the heading. And I want 11 rows. I want a sector. I want these values in the 11 rows, right? That. Number of stocks that I found in that sector. 
largest yield for each one of the sectors and the stock name with a maximum value for yield. Boom. Let's see what this looks like. Well, did that not work? <clears throat> Let's try the spade. Let's try. There we go. Got it to work in Chrome. All right. Here's the answer. Okay. All right, so there's my 13 sectors. Is that array? Number of stocks in each one of the sectors. So I got a column up here as I roll through all these hundred things. I'm going to know what sector it is. So just to count them, maximum yield in that sector, and the stock name. Okay, so these are all the best performers in each of the categories. Okay, that looks pretty, that looks pretty reasonably nasty right off the bat right there. But, okay, so I get the idea. I'm not, I've got a hundred, I've got a hundred stocks, and I know all of this about the stock. But I don't really care. I, I sort of care about the, what I want to do is I want to count all the stocks that are in the health care sector. Here's health care. It'll be in that one right here. So that'll be root.child nodes 3. It'll be the fourth item. So it's here's it. 0, 1, 2, 3. There's the value of sector. So that's how I get sector. I look at this. This is sector. So I, I know this, the 11 values of sector. So I got to count all of these things, right? 11 things. All right. Then I want then I want a 12 row table. Here's my 12 rows. Here are all the sector names. Here are all the counts. Maximum yield. Name of the stock. So, reasonably, I won't have to ask a question. Here's my question. Maximum yield. In each one of these categories, I've got to figure out which. So, I'm going to have, really, these are, this is, this, these are 11 maximums. And these are 11 company names for those maximums. So, usually, I go through and I say, well, you know, if you go back and look at the old exams, I'll say, okay, as you're rolling down through the table and you're getting these values, you know, count something, find the maximum of some column. Well, you know, here, here's what I got is I'm rolling around. I got 13. I mean, excuse me, I got 11 of these things. I've got to keep, I got 11 maxims I got to remember. Remember what they are. I got 11 things to count and I got 11 stock names to count. Oh, wait a minute, what the hell happened here? Where's the rest of it? Okay, there didn't any rest of it, okay. So I want a 12-row table, and the first row I want the head, this thing I call heading, and then I want the sector. Those are the sectors, that's an array. What I need is an array of the number of stocks, an array of the large dividends, an array of stock names. 11 of those, 11 of these, 11 of these, 11 of these. Here are those 11 things. Okay, let's go look at let's go look at the answer. Let's go get up and do this with. I don't care about this one. So here's all my, here's the program. Let's bring this up a little bit. Okay, so here's the, the regular version of things like clean up the code, you know, do all the things, get it loaded. Exam answer starts here. 
Okay, so here's here is that array. I said here's the eleven healthcare organizations, and here's a heading. I said what you were going to use. And okay, so here's my arrays. I didn't tell you to do this. You're gonna, this is one you're going to have to figure out for yourself here. I got to got to remember eleven stock names. How many how many of them are in each category? What the maximum yields is. So I need a bunch of arrays. Three of them, as a matter of fact. Okay, so. I expect you to be able to write this. Now, the ones that we're trying to keep the max on, I gotta initialize them to some value, and I gotta initialize the counts in each category to zeros. Okay, so here's my look. Root.childnotes.length. No no surprise there at all. It is root.childnotes.length. I'm gonna go get my values. Rank stock name. And notice this is root out child notes of I. Here's my five children. Child node zero dot node value. Ew, there's that there's that nasty thing again, right? This is this is the non IE version. But I go out and I get my five columns of data. All right, so now I know about them. So now I'm gonna I've got an eleven. U, this is gonna find this stock sector. So for the stock that I've got, remember this each one of these this big loop right here is a stock. I go through and ask the question. Which sector is it in? Okay, so here's my sector thing. So sector I got right here. It was the fourth column. That's the value of sector. So is sector equal to, it's going to go down the list, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one. I'll we'll call down these sector values. And when we find it, I remember what sector it's in. Column 0 through 10. Remember that. And count it. Oh, here's my num stocks, right? Here's my counters. So I want to count that stock. Now I'm going to ask the question about max yield. Is for, for this sector, here's the sector. B is my is the yield for this one bigger than max yield. So if it is, max yield gets that and it gets the stock name. Another if statement right here. Now I'm going to write the results. Okay. Here's my table. Here's my headings. Here are the 11 things. The sector, number of stocks in that category, max shield, max name. Max name here, max shields here, number of stocks here, sector number up here. Okay, and there's my table. Got 11 rows, got four columns. Stick it in the dip block. Now this this one was, you know, wasn't particularly, you didn't have to write the, the top part of this, which, which is sort of okay, but it's, it's Again, it's pretty straightforward. It's, it should sound, the, the task should sound very similar to the task for the first exam. Uh, in the fact, in the sense that there are these arrays that uh, I've got to initialize. So if I, if I look at what you were supposed to write here, the only thing you had to write, I'm telling you this is already there, the, the names of the categories and the headings already there. So you got to set up these arrays. Loops you should have gotten pulling the data out. I told you exactly how to do that on the exam page. Find out which sector it's in. Is it got the biggest shield? If it has, remember its name. Okay. Roll the table out. There are my five, my four things. 11, 11 rows, four columns. Ends right there. Not a particularly easy question, not a particularly, you know, the biggest thing I recall is this, people had a lot of trouble with this. In other words, if, 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 instead of asking for one min or a max or one count, I'm asking for 11. So the real difference between this and the first exam is in this exam, I don't, I don't expect you to use scalars. I expect you to be using arrays because at 11 maximum, 11 maximum names, 11 stock counts. So it's just a, a complication in turning things from a scalar program to a program that does a lot of things by using arrays. Okay, 
So let's back out of this. Shut that one down. Let's go find another one. Uh, I don't know if I'm in the mood for a Hamlet question tonight. Okay, Monarchs of Scotland. This one's good. This is a, this is a reasonably good question. Okay, you can tell this is the XML question because here's all the XML. Uh, so we'll cover this one later. Okay, so let's read the question. Uh, I got a text area right here. No surprise. Name text area two because it's the second question. F2 is the form two. It's got XML for the kings and queens of Scotland. Okay, so I'm going to tell you I did this. Code below retrieves the string. Here's the string. Using Microsoft. The XML DOM goes out and gets this data. Just form to TA2, that's the XML, puts it in a string, loads it into the XML document object, and we take Microsoft version and we have root. Okay. So the structure of the data we can see over here is the monarchs of Scotland. That's my outside set of tags. Here's Monarchs of Scotland. Here's the DTD, right, like this. Monarchs of Scotland. What I have is a bunch of houses. All right, houses. Houses. Okay, houses. The family name of successive related kings and queens. Okay, so we have, for example, the House of Dunkel. Let's see what else we've got. We've got Kenmore. Let's see what the table looks like. So we come down here, the Minor of the Monarchs of Scotland. Okay, if this is the big title. Here's the House of Dunkel. Four kings. Year they started, year they quit being king. House of Canmore, House of Beloy, House of Bruce. This is Robert the Bruce from the famous movie. House of Stuart. Ends with King James the Sixth of Scotland becoming James the First of England in 1603. So we're going to go from basically 1625 back to 10005. So that's what our data looks like. So we'll leave this data up here like this. Okay, so we can sort of see it. Here's here's the monarch name, house name. All right. So let's go through and look at. It. Houses, divided into houses, has a house name and a bunch of monarchs. Monarchs, here's the house, here's the house names, the house of Dunkel. House name. Then we have monarchs. Then we have monarchs. Each monarch's got a name when they started, when they ended being king. Monarch, monarch name, beginning reign, ending reign, here to here, end of monarch. There's my monarch tag. Another monarch tag, another monarch tag, another monarch tag, in the house. Of Dunkel. Start the house of Canmore. More monarchs. Well, it's a lot easier to look at it over here like this, right? Here's the house of Dunkel. Four. Canmore has four. 12. Lots of kings and queens. Beloyal has one. House of Bruce has two. And then the House of Stuart. Okay, so we just got to roll it out. So we got to get all this data. Uh, so our, our question is, we go up and look at the DTD. Got any plus signs? We got two plus signs. Okay. So we got a plus sign for the houses. I can see that in the output. Here's my houses. Notice they're all in capital letters. This is no, no significance, just put them in capital letters. And then each house, here's my loop underneath the house. All right, so houses on the outside, name of the house, bunch of monarchs. Okay, so this is going to change every time. And house is the outside loop. Okay. 
All right, so let's go look at the code. Make it big. Okay, so here's the code. Uh, this is all the stuff that I got to do to get it loaded. This is where I get it loaded from uh, the text area right here. Loaded into the XML doc. Here's my code. Okay, so got a line here that says, I'm just put this in here. This is just heading across the top monarchs of Scotland. Okay, and I got one thing I've got to remember is that I've got to have a question about the maximum reign. Who reigned the longest period of time and who was that? Okay, I'm not going to worry about that part right now. I haven't even read that part yet. Here's my loop right here. This is my table loop, right? Table tag right here. Ending table tag right here. Here's my table loop. Okay, so I start a row. I'm going to span three columns and write the name of the house. Right. name of the house is this. Now, you know that because I gave you that. Here, here are all the notes, right? This, this is going to happen every time. Exam back up here. This one. Okay. So on the exam, I'm going to give you this. Here's roots.childnodes link. That's the number of houses. That's the house loop. Right here. House name. Here's what the house name is. That goes right here. Number of monarchs. How long is this loop? This is magic because there's a different number here. Root dot childness about root dot childness i is the house, right? How many in the house? So root dot child nodes to buy for zero is four. In other words, this, this, the first house has four monarchs. So here's the monarch loop. Right. I'm going to take the second piece of data, right? Go up here and look at this. This is the second piece of data. Get the name of the house, then there's a whole list of monarchs. And then roll through the monarchs. Alright, so we start this off like this. Back and look at our code here. <clears throat> oh, that's the wrong. happened here. Let's stop for a second. I'm making my window square away here. Here he is. So we'll get rid of this one. Alright, we just had it sitting on top of the other one. Alright, so Here's my house loop right here. I tell you where to get the house. House comes from this, which is that. Now, so here's a loop. I'm, so my house loop, for the house loop, I got to have a three column spanning row. And there's the name of the house. Center it. Make a row. Now I'm going to make a row for each one of the kings. Right? Here's how many there are. I'm going to tell, I'm going to tell you that exact same thing. How many, how many of them are there? Here's the house loop. Here's the house name. Number of monarchs. 
root.childnotesabye.childnotes.length root.childnotesabye.childnotes.length how many monarchs? start a row give me all three of their values right? root.childnotesabye.childnotesabye.childnotesabye.childnotesabye.childnotesabye.childnotesabye.childnotesabye.childnotesabye.childnotesabye.childnotesabye.childnotesabye.childnotesabye.childnotesabye.childnotesabye.
Number 100 is Craig. Females have been ranked. Mary. Now this is this is very odd. Mary is sort of dominant. Look at twice as many Marys than there are Patricia, which is number two. But the the men are all clustered up in these groups. But the women, they don't they get clustered right here, right? Long after Mary. There seems to be a lot more women names than there are men names because the populations are actually about the same. Okay, so let's see how this is laid out. Baby names. Top 100 baby names. Here's my here's my baby name tag. Here's baby names. R M N M C F N F C. Uh, what the hell does that mean? Okay, so if we come over here, it's the the DTD. Uh, R is rank. M N is male name. M C is male count. FN is female name and female count. Okay, so the data, we look at it this way. Rank, male name, count, female name, count. Five pieces of data here. Okay, so we can see it. We can see rank one, male name James, born 87,000, Mary, 367,000. That's my data. Those are my five columns. Baby name tags. BNs. A hundred of these. Well, this, this one ought to be a piece of cake. Look at this. So over here, I'm telling you what the five data items are. This is obviously root.childnotes.length. Well, you don't need to know that because you know it's a hundred. Uh, and here's the data. Row I, right? Here's my loop. Tag 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. Walking down that list like that. So there are my five pieces. Rank goes here. Mail name here. Count here. Bum, bum, bum. So that's easy. I just got to go get these five things. Right? No heading. Nothing like that. Okay, so first question is, produce the 100 row five column table. Hey, there you go. We know how to do this one. It's a loop. Here's our five column names. Loaded up my table. Piece of cake. Uh, let's see what else we've got to do here. Following the table. Oh, crap. So the number of male names that occur more than a million times. Then show the number of female names that occurred more than a million times. Hmm. Let's see what that says. What does that look like on the down at the bottom? Male names occurring over a million times 27. Female names occurring. Okay, let's go do that. So we're gonna have to count something. Actually, we'll have to count two things here, right? We have to count two things for that. Okay, what else do we need to know? We need to know um, show the percentage of all the male names that are in the top 100. Of the 166 million male births during the last century, all male births are not shown in the XML. <laughs> okay. The percentage of all the male names that are in the top 100. So I got to add up all of column three, and what percentage of that of the 166 million really names? Let's go look at the bottom of this again. So that would be. So that says that 57% of these 100 names, 57% of the population of 166,000 is in the top 10. Excuse me, top 100. And for females, 39%, or probably 40% of them, a lot more female names. A lot more female names. Um, am I on the list here? Well, it's not over here. Fourth there. I'm sorry, how did I miss that? Fourth. 
Okay. Sydney's not on the list. So that's, that's the rest of them. All right. So we got to do that. That's, so it looks like what we're going to have to do is we're going to add up this column and add up this column. Take the sum of that. Divide it by that. Add up this column. Take the sum of that and divide it by that. That's that's not too bad. That's that's going to be some simple arithmetic stuff. So, but first first things first. First thing is to get the table out. So let's go look at the code for this. So we say view source. Get the text size up. So here's the function. All right, <clears throat> so here we go. All right, so we're going to reach down there and we're going to get that big XML stream of data out of there. Let's get this up on the screen here. All right, we'll just slide this over the side. So this, this is all the DOM processor, which you don't really need to worry about. So we get it loaded. Comes in and we load it up. Okay, you got a uh, counts for over a million. Mom's over a million. Males over a million. Females over. Well, I got to. That probably wasn't too good an idea. Choice for data names. Uh, mom. The the variable name mom is the count of males. Males over a million. Females over a million. Okay, I just got to remember that. Okay, and two sums. Males over a million count. Females over a million count. Okay, so these are sums. sums. It should have been S's. Okay, so let's look through. All right, so this one's going to do this in a different way. This is sort of reasons good one to look at. I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, go get the elements. I'm gonna get all the tag names. Let's say B and this is this is a slightly different way of doing it. So bring me back all the tag names that say B N. So we go look at my code. Look at what that does. Here's B in. Okay. Okay. So here's this just loops through my columns. Does the same thing. B in sub I J first child node value. Like that. Here's my T D tags. Row loop. Count if over a million male count, female count over a million, mom plus plus, phone plus plus, sum. I'm going to add up all those counts, two and four. Like that. End of the row, end of the table, do the displays. Male count over a million, female count over a million, then the percentages. Stick it in that block. This one probably wins the award. Maybe not. But if you look at it, it's the same it's the same program. It's the same program we wrote to begin with. Yes, you know, we we keep processing these big stacks of paper and producing these nice row column reports. Well, surprisingly, I think I a lot of your programming jobs in your career in business are going to be involved in making reports like this. Sort of the nature of the business. All right, so not a particularly tough problem. Could have done this the other way. Uh, we just is done by tag names. That's just a variation of the way you can go about getting your hands on that string. But we didn't notice we didn't even use root. We could have done this another way. We could have done the root thing. So probably a good good test would be to take this piece of code, copy it, come over here and, and write the root dot child nodes version rather than using the git by tag name. All right. So leave that one alone. Again, you get the idea. You've seen this before more than once. Oh, let's see if we can find something else interesting here. It. 
Okay, this is uh, this is a this is a big piece of data. This is uh, let's see what we get here. This is the top hundred high schools in the United States. Five hundred high schools in the United States. Okay. So this is problem number two. So again, really big DTD. Five hundred high schools. A lot of data. So this one you want to be careful. Don't don't make sure, be careful printing out the whole piece of code because this this gets a little bit lengthy here. And then this is actually an image. This is not a, not a file here. All right. So what I've got is got a data outline with 500 high school data from the 2011 top 500 high schools from Newsweek. I got 10 tags for each school. Name, rank, city, state. That's that's pretty reasonable. Rank, name, city, state. Student teacher ratio, that's like a number. Graduation rate, APIB test, percent of people going to college, average SAT, Newsweek score. Wow. Okay, so let's go let's go look at that again. So the, the rank, that's gonna be, you know, one to five hundred. The name of the school, city, state, straightforward, STR, student-teacher ratio, graduation date, that's a number, tests, college-bound percentage, SAT average, Newsweek ranking. Okay, so I want a 10 column, well, that's going to be useful because i got 10 pieces of data. 500 row table, no column headings. Boom, there's the table. Okay, so here's the rank, school name, state, city, and percentages. All right, so the table looks to be reasonably straightforward. Don't need column headings. Okay, then, then, I want a two-row, 50-column table that shows the two-letter state in row one and the number of schools in the top 500. Okay, so here are all the states. I'm going to need that because I'm going to have to write a report out, right? Two row, 50 column table. Here's my 50 states. And here's state over here. So after I get through with the big, with the big thing, which is really straightforward, I got to do this little thing. Look at this. It's two rows. 50 columns. Number of them in Alaska. California has 53. Texas has 38. New York 63. Looks like Texas is third. And the lowest graduation rate, 72. And the Maximum average SAT is from Morrow Bay High School in Morrow Bay, California. I want the smallest graduation rate. Okay, let's do it one at a time. First thing, roll out the table. Bad enough. I got two reasonably complicated questions. I got to roll out this t second table here. How to how to get this 50 state counts to see if they're in the Wow, okay. Got to count them. All right, so let's go look at this piece of code. Big tech size. Okay, so here's the exam. So here's my array. My array of state names or state abbreviations. Yeah, you're not required to do that. And here's my count array. I'm going to do this counts. Right 
<clears throat> All right, go get the data. Here's the parser. Okay, so here's the table. Here's my loop. Schools. I'm doing this. This is another get by tag name. So by tag name, right, that's going to give me the whole tag. It's going to give me all that. So if I say by tag name and I say go give me the school, I find the school. There's the school tag, right? That's this. It's not the outside set of tags. It's the individual set of tags. It happens 500 times. Okay, so there's that array. Lowest graduation rate, highest SAT. All right, those, that, that's going to be really simple because those, those are just two questions we need. All right, so go ahead and get the data by tag name. So I've got that string. Start the table, end the table. Start the OS. I'm going to, have, I'm going to try to find a minimum, so I'll start that with a big number, and I'm going to, have to find a maximum, so I'll start that with a little number. Here's school. How many schools? This is zero. To, we know this is 500. You could have put 500 right there, and we would have been getting good with that. I wouldn't even have to waste time thinking about that one. Okay, so we're going to write the table row. Table row, 10 columns. I, J, first child. Find the state. Okay, now I've got to go look through all 50 states. Here's the state abbreviation. Is it equal to one of these? And when it is, count it. So this is my counter. This little loop right here. This is going to make that second table. Uh, here's the graduation rate. Is it less than the minimum? If it is, I remember it, and I remember where it was located. I remember the name, the, the row number of the school. Is it, uh, what about its SAT? Is SAT bigger than max? Here's the SAT score. Here's max. Remember it. Remember which one had the max. Put the two totals out. Write the state abbreviations, 50 of them, start row, end row, that, state counts, write them out in a row. Write out the minimum graduation rates. Let's go with the best SAT. page on the fly. After the table, we go look at the bottom. Here's my counts. Minimum graduation rate is the Paxton School for Advanced Studies. That's the name of the, that's the name of the school, Jacksonville, Florida. Lowest rate, highest SAT average. 2245, Norro Bay, California. So it actually, is, there's really three questions on this one over and above having to roll it out in the XML. I think the XML rollout is probably reasonably easy here. Uh, these, this, this might have been a little much on asking the question. Maybe, 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 maybe not. Okay, so it's about, we got about an hour into this. Uh, we'll take a break for your night and sort of, you know, hang this one up, shut this down, and we'll uh, play some more in, in a couple of days.